Hi, welcome back to Cooking for the Yum of It. I am your very attractive host, Wesley, and today we are going to be preparing a red wine braised pot roast. This is an incredibly delicious meal, which I will be serving later with mashed potatoes and steamed Brussels sprouts. So, let's get started. Now here we see our two chuck roasts that we're going to be using. And the most important thing we need to do, aside from making sure the camera is in the correct angle, I really wish I had a camera person to do this for me, is we are going to dry our meat. If we don't dry the meat, it will not brown properly. Okay, so take your paper towels and set your roasts on them. And then, oh, look at all that moisture. And then dry our meat. Now, we are going to add a little salt. Not a whole lot. We're trying to cut back on salt, remember? And some pepper. Just smack that pepper's bottom. Don't worry, the pepper enjoys it. Now, I oh, hope that didn't make you dizzy. We are going to turn our stove onto a medium-high heat. I'd like to thank my roommate. Oops. Excuse me, don't worry, it's not COVID. Uh, I'd like to thank my roommate, Antonio Vargas Powell for the use of his large skillet here. I've got one, but it's not as large, and I would have had to, s even, uh, I would have had to scrunch up the, uh, the chuck roast. We're using chuck, a uh, cut of beef called chuck. Now let's take two tablespoons of our olive oil. Swirl it around so that it evenly coats the surface of our pan. We're going to start with two, min uh, two tablespoons, uh, but always keep the olive oil out in case you need to add more as the oil will evaporate. Then, once the oil looks ready, we're going to take our first roast and we're going to brown it on both sides. It should take about four to five minutes per side. While we're waiting for our first side, since we don't have a very large skillet, we have to do this in batches. Uh, first one of the pot roasts and then the other. We don't want the heat to be too high, and I don't know how well you'll hear me, but I do think it'd probably be better if I turn on the uh, overhead fan, although I will try to keep it from smoking too much that it sets off the smoke alarms. Those things are so annoying. Sometimes I swear it would be less upsetting to just wake up on fire. So let's skip ahead because it's probably a bit boring to just watch meat cook. So one thing I will show you is to keep the meat from sticking too much and scorching your pan. Since we're just browning it, you can uh, scooch it around first uh, as we're doing this. on this side, so we're going to flip it over. 
just give it another minute or so on the other side. Doesn't that look good? Now this is a, another slow cooker dish. Like I said, I'm working my way through the uh, French slow cooker. Once I've done, the, uh, done all of those, I'm seriously considering uh, buying and then cooking my way through the Julia Child Mastering the Art of French Cooking. But that's going to take some time, and I want to make sure I have the proper tools to do it. So let's take another jump ahead. Okay, I just finished the first of the roasts, and we are going to need some more oil here. But that's okay. Better to have too much than not enough. Oh! Be very careful when you do that or the oil will jump out and attack your fingers. Just learned that the hard way. Second half, uh, the second of the chuck roast is nearly done. I've got all my other ingredients ready. It already smells great, and I haven't even started cooking yet. This is going to be so yummy. Yummy in the tummy. Now that we're done with the beef, we add our two cups of a dry red wine. We take our wooden spoon, and we start scraping up the bottom to get all those brown bits for the extra flavor. I love cooking with wine. As Julia Child said, I sometimes even put it in the food. Yes, I know. She's become an obsession of mine lately. For those who didn't know. Okay. Now we're going to scrape up those bits. got them all. Every one is a little speck of extra flavor. Now we're going to take the vegetables that I prepared earlier, two uh, stalks of celery, two onions, all chopped, Three large carrots, also chopped. Now we're going to also be adding our. Uh, now the recipe calls for uh, two cloves of minced garlic, but I am a big garlic fan, so I'm adding four cloves. turns out to be too much, well, live and learn. Make sure the wine is still simmering. And we're also, let me see, make sure I'm in the right order here. Uh, da -da. One pinch, I almost forgot this, maybe a tiny bit more, of ground cloves. Interesting thing about cloves, they were once considered as valuable as gold. Now we're going to 
put our chuck roasts, although they look more like steaks to me. not as much as pleasant as uh, if you don't overcook it. So uh, we will be jumping ahead to uh, see how it comes out in about eight hours. See you then. Okay, here we are. About eight hours later. And oh, if you could only be here to smell how fantastic this is. It's absolutely heaven and it's very tender so this is going to be a bit more difficult than I originally thought I'm going to have to use instead of the fork I was using earlier I'm going to have to try to scoop out my meat Oh, just look how that's falling apart like melting butter, isn't it? Oh, fantastic. Okay. See, that's why uh, slow cookers are fantastic. Even if it's a normally a rather tough cut of meat, it will cook so tender by the time you're done. Sure. Sorry, my hands keep getting in the way. Make sure I've got all the meat. The, the vegetables we're going to be discarding. But I want to make sure I get all of the meat that I can. wondering now if, you know, the recipe says 8 to 10 hours, but I'm wondering, maybe I should have cooked for just 7 hours. Ah, either way, it looks pretty good. all the meat. Now the beef I'm going to be putting in the oven to keep warm while I do the next step in the process. Which is, now the recipe said to discard the vegetables, the solids it calls it, but I'm not going to do that because they look pretty good to me and not 
too mushy, so I have to strain them out anyway. So after I strain them out, I am going to, don't worry, this is completely cool. After I strain them out, I'm going to put them back in the slow cooker to keep warm while I prepare the sauce and serve that as a, that was the oven letting me know that it's finally preheated. So anyway, we're going to strain. And the liquid, or the jus, as it is sometimes called, is going to go next step in the process. Let's change the temp on our slow cooker to keep warm. Now, the next thing we need to do is we're going to turn the oven on. I mean the stove, sorry, the oven's already on. Now this is some water I've had chilling in the refrigerator. We need the cool water and two tablespoons of cornstarch. To thicken our sauce. Good stir. Don't be a wimpy stirrer. Stirrer. Ugh. Okay. Now, as soon as that starts to double, double toil and trouble. <coughs> Get a little bubbly. It's just getting close. I'll set that there for a second. I put my other mixing bowl back where they go. You'll see over here, I'm making some mashed potatoes to go with our uh, beef. Okay, turn it down to a medium heat, and we stir in our cornstarch liquid. Oh, don't stir too fast or it'll slop over the side. Add more, and we let the sauce thicken. So let's skip ahead. One thing I forgot to mention while we're waiting for the sauce to thicken, we also want to strain the fat off of the surface. It's a rather laborious process. Probably won't get all of it off. Here's something that my grandma used to do to help Oh, but you stir it. Oh, 
and then let the fat come to you. I'm probably not doing it as well as she did. She was fantastic. This is going to reduce a bit, which is something we need because that will help thicken it. And if it doesn't look like it's getting any thicker, we can always add more cornstarch. Which is what I think I'm going to do. Be right back. Now, earlier I did it mixing in the water. You'll see it gets little clumpy bits here, but that's easy to fix. You just move them to the side and you flatten them. Again, that's a trick my grandma taught me. I probably did it wrong, but not to worry. There are always ways to fix anything. Okay, with a little bit more time and a little bit more cornstarch and water, our sauce is starting to thicken up really nice. smells like absolutely heaven. Gently stir. You can do a figure eight, you can do clockwise, you can do counterclockwise, you can do X's. However you want to do this. Okay, I think that's pretty good for now. So we're going to move this. Ooh, watch out there. of the beef. Now, included with that, I'm going to add some of the solid bits with which the book says to discard, but I don't want to do that. They look like they'd be kind of tasty. And I'm going to serve that. I was going to do a uh, I have to admit, I was going to do Brussels sprouts with this, but I changed, ah, oh, come on, changed my mind. Now, take a little bit of the sauce, put that over our beef, and just a little bit, maybe, maybe not a little bit. Can use it as a gravy for our potatoes. Well, now that I've dished up my favorite part, I get to go eat. Really is my favorite part. Okay, some of our braised pot roast here. Mmm. Quite tasty and tender. 
excuse me, and the uh, sauce made with the red wine does go very well with the potatoes. Mmm. And the vegetables, which the book foolishly, well, maybe not so foolish, let's find out. Mmm. Yes. Which the cookbook foolishly says to discard, make an excellent side vegetable dish. So, there is my dinner for tonight. Uh, red wine braised pot roast with a side of uh, vegetables and mashed potatoes with the gravy that we made from the sauce with the red wine. I ho <coughs> excuse me. I hope you enjoy it as much as I did making it and until next time always remember eat and enjoy.